In the realm of Hebrew studies, many grammatical interpretations are driven by English translation equivalents. Such an approach often revolves around associating specific semantic meanings to Hebrew grammar, like categorizing various uses of the word war, or determining when a pronoun is emphatic. While this method provides certain insights, it falls short in aiding learners to grasp Hebrew as an independent language. This causes confusion among students, as they can recognize the grammatical elements but remain unclear on their actual function in Hebrew. They often question the necessity of using one form over another. To address this, one should contemplate the available grammatical choices and discern the significance of picking one option over the others. Categorizing a word like wow into numerous semantic slots doesn't give students a cohesive understanding of its genuine role in Hebrew. Also, the central premise of the Lexham Discourse Hebrew Bible, LDHB, is that linguistic choices convey meaning. For instance, a writer's decision to use a specific form, like a participle over others, such as a finite verb, implies a unique meaning distinct from the alternatives. This principle goes beyond mere syntactic function or translation. In everyday communication, we frequently decide how best to express ourselves from several available options. Often these decisions are made subconsciously, rooted in our understanding as native speakers. Still, the choices we make are significant and purposeful. Every language, despite its unique features, must serve fundamental communicative purposes. For instance, recounting an event requires introducing characters, setting the scene, providing background information, and guiding the listener through the narrative. These actions might include denoting changes in time or place, emphasizing particular events, or determining sentence structures. The shared communicative tasks across languages can be a guiding framework for linguistic analysis. One such task is forward-pointing, where certain linguistic elements create anticipation in the discourse. While the devices executing this task may vary, particles in one language, pronouns in another, they essentially serve the same purpose, albeit with nuanced differences. By categorizing linguistic devices based on their communicative tasks, we can discern their specific functions and make cross-linguistic comparisons. Such a task-oriented approach helps in comprehending biblical Hebrew texts and aids in effectively conveying their meaning in preaching or teaching. English and Hebrew have marked differences. However, a function-based methodology allows us to grasp Hebrew in its authentic context and draw parallels with English based on shared communicative tasks, not necessarily shared linguistic forms. This approach is termed as discourse grammar. Moreover, prominence plays a crucial role in distinguishing elements in both visual and auditory mediums. The way an element stands out or blends into the background dictates its prominence. In visual art, the portrayal of a subject can be manipulated through various choices. For instance, by adjusting proportions, artists can create an illusion of depth even on a two-dimensional canvas. This is akin to selecting an apt vantage point in photography. Consider Mount Shuksan, a frequently photographed landmark. The common composition involves flanking the mountain with tall evergreens, accompanied by a lake in the foreground. The contrasting colours of evergreens and the mountain snow create a visual delight. Additionally, the time of day influences the image's mood, as shown by differences in photos taken at midday versus sunset. While the lake offers colour contrast, its reflection amplifies the mountain's prominence. Centralising the mountain accentuates its significance. Conversely, an image without these framing devices, like one only set against the sky, lacks these contrasting elements, rendering a different presentation. Similarly, in writing, authors decide on background information's placement and prominence. They discern if it should be a story's focal point or merely a backdrop. Drawing parallels to the techniques in photography, a writer's choice in presenting information is akin to deciding on framing, viewpoint, and contrasts in a photo. Therefore, understanding how prominence works in visual arts can provide insights into narrative structures and emphases in written content. Furthermore, Prominence and contrast are vital techniques utilized by Hebrew Bible writers to communicate significance. Prominence can be described as drawing attention to a particular aspect, much like a close-up shot in photography. 
there are two primary methods to achieve prominence in discourse. One, by pulling a particular element to the forefront, thus making it the focal point. Two, by pushing other elements into the background, thereby leaving only a few key details in the spotlight. The resultant effect of both methods is to guide the audience's attention, but the context and implications differ depending on the method chosen. Human beings are inherently attuned to patterns. Recognising these patterns allows us to predict and anticipate future events or actions. However, when there is a break or alteration in the pattern, it immediately grabs our attention. This sudden shift becomes an indicator of significance, prompting us to search for the underlying meaning of the change. For instance, if a usually casually dressed individual unexpectedly wears a formal suit, questions arise regarding the reason behind the shift. The change from the regular pattern suggests that there might be a special occasion or purpose behind the choice of attire. Musicians and songwriters apply similar principles. They use recurring themes or refrains to create a sense of familiarity and expectation. When these patterns are adjusted, such as building to a crescendo, it affirms a pivotal moment or climax in the piece. In essence, prominence is about making an element distinct in its setting. This distinctiveness is achieved mainly through contrast, which relies heavily on our inherent ability to recognise and anticipate patterns. Even if we can't articulate these patterns, we can still discern contrasts, and this recognition shapes our interpretation. In communication, choices made regarding what and how to convey messages are loaded with meaning. Choosing to deviate from a recognised pattern conveys importance, enabling communicators to assert certain aspects while downplaying others. Last but not least, Westbury and Runge highlight the distinction between inherent semantic meaning and the pragmatic effects that arise from specific contexts. A simple phrase like, your children, can shift its effect based on context. For instance, if a husband refers to his and his wife's kids as your children in a discussion about their behaviour, the phrasing implies blame or annoyance, even though the semantic meaning is neutral. This demonstrates that context can transform a phrase's impact without changing its inherent meaning. Similarly, the authors illustrate how the same phrase can convey different messages based on context. Let him have it can either mean to pass an item or to attack someone depending on the situation. While the core meaning remains unchanged, its pragmatic effect varies. In addition, Westbury and Rung delve into Hebrew grammar to further demonstrate their point, focusing on the phrase nom iva, which translates to declares utterance of yehuh. While sometimes it indicates the speaker, at other times it interrupts a speech, creating a distinct pragmatic effect. In some contexts, it's used to segment a lengthy speech into shorter thematic sections. Alternatively, it can maintain a pivotal point, as seen in Gen 22 16, 17, where the phrase separates God's act of swearing from the content of the oath, creating anticipation. Westbury and Rung conclude that differentiating between semantic meaning and pragmatic effect is vital. This distinction helps in comprehending the non-standard or wrong use of devices in languages. Often, languages repurpose words to achieve a desired pragmatic outcome, like Hebrew's use of naumiva, where it isn't semantically necessary. Recognising the line between inherent meaning and the influence of context is essential for accurate language interpretation. In conclusion, Hebrew studies frequently utilise English translation equivalents for grammatical interpretation, which can limit students' understanding of Hebrew as an independent language. An example of this is the categorization of the word war into various semantic meanings. The Lexham Discourse Hebrew Bible, LDHB, argues that linguistic choices in writing convey specific meanings, pointing out the importance of understanding why a particular form or structure is chosen. Every language has unique features but serves fundamental communicative purposes. For instance, forward pointing in discourse creates anticipation, a task present in different languages, though executed with varied devices. Analyzing linguistic devices based on their communicative tasks can enhance understanding and allow for better cross linguistic comparisons. The approach focused on communicative tasks is termed discourse grammar. Further, 
Prominence is crucial in distinguishing elements in both writing and visual arts. In visual arts, techniques like adjusting proportions can manipulate perception. In writing, authors determine the prominence of information. Techniques like contrast, vital in visual mediums, are used in Hebrew Bible narratives. Prominence in discourse can be achieved by pulling an element to the forefront or pushing other details to the background. These methods guide the audience's attention. Deviations from recognised patterns in any form of art or communication capture attention and convey importance. Besides, Westbury and Runga explore the relationship between inherent semantic meaning and the pragmatic effects from specific contexts. For example, the phrase your children can imply blame in a specific context, even if its core meaning remains neutral. The Hebrew phrase now miva can vary in its pragmatic effect based on its placement in a text. It's crucial to differentiate between semantic meaning and context-driven pragmatic effects for accurate interpretation of languages. This distinction acknowledges the flexibility in language use, where words may be repurposed to achieve a desired effect.